Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman, Wargamer. In this video, we'll be looking at Task Force Carrier Battles in the Pacific, a game by Jinichiro Suzuki. And specifically, we'll be looking at the tutorial scenarios. So let's have a look at scenario one. And scenario one is Attack on Pearl Harbor. And here it is. You will take command of the Imperial Japanese Navy's Kaido Butai in their air raid over Pearl Harbor, forcing the entry of the USA into World War II. It's a one-player scenario designed to show you the rules for air-to-surface attacks and anti-air defences. So here are the rules we need to read. And here are the units involved. We're going to have two attack groups of Japanese airplanes. And here are the ships harboured in Pearl Harbor. So let's have a quick look at the units. So these are the Japanese aircraft. We've got bombers, torpedo bombers, and dive bombers. There are also fighters, but they're not in this uh, scenario. So what do these numbers mean? Well, this one in the top right-hand corner is the unit's air-to-air -air value. And I say units because each one of these represents about nine planes, but air-to-air -air is not involved in this scenario. Neither is this number here, which some of the aircraft have, which is their range. In this scenario, we're already over Pearl Harbor, ready to drop our ordnance. This here is their carrier base, if you like, and the allied name for the plane. So the only number that's of interest in this scenario is this one on the left-hand side. That is its air-to-surface strength, and that's the combined value we'll use when we look on the air-to-surface chart here. If a unit is damaged, just like most war games, there are steps. And we turn the counter over. So this is about four to five planes now. And most of the values are reduced as well. So that's the planes. Here are two of the ships involved in the scenario. The battleship West Virginia and the light cruiser Helena. And again, we've got letters or numbers on the corners. This, of course, is their type. And this is their firepower. We won't be using that. It's not a naval encounter. And this number here is the durability. That's how much damage the ship can take on this side of the counter, because as you'll see, it can lose a step. And this is its anti-air value, which we'll see after the shock of the attack is got over and the ships start firing back, just like the aircraft. There is a damaged side and combat is performed not in the usual manner, as you'll see. But there we are. That's the ships and the planes. I'll just do a quick sort of overview of how damage works on battleships and cruisers. Incidentally, destroyers work slightly different, but um, they're not involved in this scenario. And we'll show you that when they turn up. As we said earlier, here is the ship's durability value. And to cause any damage, the amount of hits from air-to-surface combat must equal the durability. Anything less is just ignored. So eight hits will cause the California to receive minor damage. If the amount of hits exceed the durability by one, then this ship receives significant damage and is turned over and we can see the ship with the smoke and all that coming out of it. That's like the second stage of damage. The next stage is critical and to have this ship receive critical damage once again. That ship has to receive seven points of damage. If that occurs, then the ship is critically damaged. And as you can see, 
anti-air is zero and its firepower is zero. One more hit over the seven will sink it. So here are the ships all set up in Pearl Harbor. And over here on the setup board, we've got our two attack groups ready to go. And the uh, special rule in this scenario is that for the first four units that attack, there will be no anti-aircraft fire. The only other special rule in this scenario is that the torpedo armed Kates cannot attack certain ships because they're shielded either by other ships or indeed the coastline. And these are Pennsylvania, New Orleans, San Francisco and the Honolulu because they're in dock and Helena, Arizona, Maryland or the Tennessee because they're between the coast and a blocking ship. But once the torpedo bombers are out the way, then everything is fair game for the bombers. Right, let's get going. This is the only scenario where the actual ship counters are used and placed on the map. In all other scenarios, the ships are represented by task force markers, and these actual ships go on what they call the fleet formation sheets. Right then. So we're gonna send in our torpedo bombers because they have the highest sort of attack values or air to surface values. We can only attack these battleships or the light cruisers up the top there. But I think it's worthwhile going after uh, a battleship. And again, I'm not explaining tactics here. I'm just going through the motions and like you learning how the air to surface combat actually works. So remember, the first four units will not be subjected to anti-aircraft fire. So I think we will use a Kate. Uh, yeah, let's use a couple of Kates. So they won't get any anti-aircraft fire and that means we can use another couple next turn. Now, what should we go after? The West Virginia has the highest durability of nine. So that might not be worthwhile. Let's go after the Oklahoma. That's got a durability of seven. So let's zoom in just a bit. So these two Kates that have a combined air to ship rating of 12, it's gonna be attacking the Oklahoma, who has a durability of seven. So we can get that in there. Now, because all these ships are stationary, of course, in Pearl Harbor, the Japanese will get a minus two to their die roll. And as you can see, a low roll is a good roll. So let's see what they get. Oh dear, oh dear. It's a one minus two. And they have combined rating of 12. So we're actually here for 1224 points of damage so seven points will cause minor damage an extra one will now flip it so there we are we've got significant damage to the oklahoma there's still 16 points of damage to give to the Oklahoma. Seven of those will cause it to receive critical damage. And the extra one will unfortunately sink her. The Oklahoma is the first casualty. These two Kates now fly back and are finished with. And we'll bring out another two Kates. Maybe we'll go after the California this time. It's got a durability of eight. Again, no anti-aircraft, but after this, we've used our first four units. So, so the ships will start to fire back. But for now, we've got 12 points going after the California. 
and we have a minus two on this. We get a three. So a three minus two is one, of course. And on the one row, 12.17 points of damage. The first eight will cause minor damage and another one will flip it. And I'm going through these in stages just to show you how it works when you do it, of course. You'll probably do it in one go, but we've used nine of those 17 points. We've got eight left. Unfortunately, seven of them will be used to give the California critical damage. And another one, I think that's the 17, will sink the California as well. And these fly off. We've got one more torpedo bomber left, but it's only half a unit. They call these 0.5 of a unit in the rule book. But uh, let's send a couple of Kates as well. And we'll go after, yeah, let's go after the Nevada. And yeah, why not? Let's send another one. These are only worth two, you see. But now the West Virginia is firing back and we will be using this table. They've got an anti-air value of four. So let's see what they get. Again, a low roll is a good roll. So they throw a six. So on the four, a six. Now we've got two numbers here. The first number is the DRM that will be applied to this chart. But the second number is a step loss. So this attacking group is going to lose a step loss. I think we'll actually lose a step loss from here because that's three points. We could lose that, but that's three points. We'll lose a step loss. That'll take it down to one, but I think that'll, that'll give us the best air to surface anti-ship rating. So now we've got two, four, seven, eight. Let's see what we get against the West Virginia. Oh, we still get our minus two, so that's one. 13 points, don't think that's gonna be enough to sink the West Virginia. Nine of those will give it minor damage and an extra one. 10 will flip her. We've got three left, but of course that's not enough to get us to seven. So those three bounce off the hull. And these all fly back. Now all the torpedo bombers have gone. We can in fact get rid of all of these and we'll send out the last of the first attack group planes. It's two and a half units of Kates. Not a great anti-ship rating, we've got five. So it might be worth going after the West Virginia and seeing if we can cause significant damage to it. Because for five, we throw low enough, we still get our minus two for them being stationary. Let's try that. Once again, as I think I said earlier, this isn't a tactical explanation. This is me playing through the rules, seeing if I get them right. So we're going after the West Virginia, but they're going to be having a go at the Japanese planes. They've got an anti-air of three. Well, I don't know what happened there. The part where I threw the die for the American anti-air didn't record. And I've only just found out when I'm doing the post-record editing. They, in fact, threw a four, which for the West Virginia will make the Japanese add one to their die roll. So they're only going to be minus one. Anyway, sorry about that. 
back to the video. Here we go. Six minus one is five, of course. A rating of five. No. Again, bounces off the hole. We needed at least seven. So that was a wasted attack. We're now into the second attack group. And as you can see, they're all Vals. They're all dive bombers. And they've got a value of five for their anti-ship rating. Let's send out three of those. And this time... I think we'll be attacking the Nevada. If we do it like this, we'll have another two attacks of three planes each. So let's see how the Nevada fares. Oh dear, five. So four and a five. It's adding one on to the die roll. So the Japanese will only get a minus one this time. Here we go. Oh dear, oh dear. Again, 15, so we're off the chart here. That's why I used three of them. And uh, there we are. What have we got? One minus one is zero. 24 points of damage. I think we're saying goodbye to the Nevada. Seven will cause minor damage, and eight will flip it. I've got 16 left. Another seven will cause critical damage, and that's plenty left over. Another one will sink her. We'll bring in another three dive bombers. And we'll attack. Let's attack the Tennessee. They're attacking, though, with their anti-air of four. A three. It's a plus one to this roll, but it's uh, still a minus one for the Japanese. Because, just to remind you, they have a minus two as all the targets are stationary. So minus one, two, minus one is one. We've got 15, it's another 20 points of damage. So the West Virginia takes seven, gets minor. Another one, we'll flip her. Oh, wrong one. We're going after the Tennessee, aren't we? Sorry. Eight points will give minor damage. Another one will flip. That's nine points used. Another seven will cause critical damage. Only one of those are needed. Pass the seven to sink her. Dear, oh dear. Here comes the last wave. We will get some points giving significant damage. Let's try the Arizona. So they're attacking with four. Move that up a little bit. There we are. Two. That's a better throw for four. They get a plus two, so that uh, negates our minus two advantage. Let's see what happens. Oh dear, six. Don't think we're gonna sink it. Where are we? It's only 12 points of damage. Eight will cause minor damage, another one. We'll flip it, so that's nine we've used. 
We've only got three points left and that's nowhere near the seven needed. So significant damage, but she's still afloat. And that's it. And that's the end of the scenario. So how did we do? Well, the Japanese sunk four battleships and two have significant damage. So if we look on the scenario, there's a little table here saying that six victory points for each battleship sunk and three for a significant amount of damage. And that gives us a total of 30 victory points. But unfortunately, not enough even to get a major tactical victory. Very hard to get the 35 points. But there we go. That's scenario one. We're now ready to go on to scenario two. But for now, this has been a playthrough of the first tutorial scenario, scenario one, Attack on Pearl Harbor for Task Force, Carrier Battles in the Pacific, a game by Jinichiro Suzuki and published, of course, by VUCA Simulations. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and you found it interesting and gave you a bit more insight into the game. If you did enjoy it and you haven't done so already, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to the channel. It really does help. Also of great help is pushing that like button of the video, the thumbs up. And if you want to be informed of other content the channel uploads, then push the bell. As always, leave a comment. Again, this wasn't a tactical video. It was just me trying out the rules, seeing if they work, seeing if I play them correctly to be ready to move on to the next section. But what do you think? Let me know. I love to read them. Thanks as always to my subscribers. Thank you so much. And just before I go, if you wish to support the channel a little bit further, well, now you can. You can buy the channel a coffee and there's a link in the uh, description for that. Or if you wish, you can push the super thanks button underneath the video, either of which will be thankfully received and does help to keep the channel ticking along. Right, scenario two will be up in the near future. But until then, as always, you take care and goodbye.